Am I super late to the party? Maybe. But is it ever too late to talk about the negative impacts of fast fashion? Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you've been following me for a while, you will know that I'm quite interested in fashion. And this video has been on my mind for a while, but after the latest Shein controversy, I decided to finally dive in and make a video about fast fashion. Today we'll talk about the factory trip that Xi'an took some of the influencers to and I also want to discuss fast fashion in a bit broader sense. So strap in because this is a pretty big topic. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with Xi'an but in case you're not, Xi'an is a fast fashion company that sells their clothes online and they release thousands of new styles every day. Thousands of new styles daily. Their clothes are known for being very affordable, for a lack of a better word. And it's not just clothes, it's jewelry, makeup, random knickknacks, everything. They are based in China, but surprisingly not a lot is known about them or a lot is still covered in secrecy. They're not a very transparent company. That's why many deep dives and investigations, documentaries have been done on this topic to try and learn more about the company, their policies, how the garments are made, the working conditions, all of that. And through these researches into Xi'an, quite a few shocking things have been brought to light in recent years. The very obvious one is the negative impact of fast fashion on the environment. And of course, Xi'an is not the only offender here, but it's arguably the ultimate fashion juggernaut to date, with millions of products, thousands of new releases daily, to the use of cheap, non-degradable, not environmentally friendly materials, even to health risks. For example, high concentrations of lead have been found in some of the items that Xi'an sells, to other types of issues like stealing designs from small businesses, to questionable design choices, to say the least, and ultimately to selling items at prices that are so low that they simply cannot translate to a fair wage for the people producing them. If you see a top being made for $3, you don't have to be a genius to understand that something is not quite right here, that the costs of the materials and of the production cannot be that low realistically. The math is not adding up. Somewhere in that chain, serious cuts have to be made to be able to produce a top for a dollar, for two dollars, for three dollars. And that's what's been revealed in some of these undercover investigations. Xi'an workers allegedly get paid around three cents per item that they make, and they make hundreds of items per day. They work 11 to 12 hours, even much longer, according to some sources. And it's been reported that some are even taking showers and washing their hair during their lunch breaks because of those long, impossible working hours. They only get one day off per month. Not per week, per month. Needless to say, the working conditions are simply appalling and little to nothing is done for the workers' safety. And this has been a thing in fast fashion, unfortunately, for the longest time exploitation to horrific and even dangerous working conditions that lead to tragedies like the Rana Plaza collapse in Bangladesh in 2013. For the purpose of staying on track, I am focusing just or primarily on Xi'an in this video, but this is such a huge topic that it can literally not be talked about enough. So earlier this year, Xi'an took a bunch of their influencers on a trip to their factory in China. This trip has become regarded as a PR stunt, and we'll get into that in a second so you can decide for yourself what your thoughts are on the whole situation. These influencers got to see the Xi'an factory, or rather, uh, this was apparently the factory where the samples are made, so their innovation center is what they called it. And these influencers were posting all really polished, clearly scripted videos on how wonderful everything is, that they got to chat with super satisfied employees and who are, quote, not even breaking a sweat. Everybody was just working like normal, like chill, sitting down. They weren't even sweating. We were the ones sweating walking through the whole facility. Influencers took videos for their TikTok and Instagram and they were all praising, you know, the amazing factory with almost fully automated production process, great working conditions and happy 
jolly workers. And I think my favorite one was where one influencer claimed that she was so happy that she is an independent thinker and you know that she can decide for herself whether what the media is feeding us about Xi'an is true or not. You know, indicating that we should be more open-minded and we shouldn't buy the media's narrative that Xi'an is not an ethical company. I think my biggest takeaway from this trip is to be an independent thinker, get the facts and see it with your own two eyes. There's a narrative fed to us in the US and I'm one that always likes to be open-minded and seek the truth, so I'm grateful for that about myself. Yeah, very independent of her going on a brand trip on Xi'an's dime. I'm sure that didn't influence her in her decision to promote them one bit. So yeah, people are obviously seeing right through this. Many of the influencers took their videos down as well. It, it was kind of clear that this was all meant as a big PR stunt to praise Xi'an and clear the allegations about child labor, low wages, uh, terrible working conditions and, and all the negativity. I mean, personally, I find it really disgusting that Xi'an would rather pay a bunch of Western influencers for a trip to their innovation center and pay them to promote them, they would rather spend money on this rather than pay their workers a fair living wage and ensure that their rights are not being violated. Fast fashion, anything from Xi'an to Wish and similar fashion sites, it's kind of like the plague. It's all about the new shiny things, quantity over quality, consumerism to the nth degree. Hauls were one of the OG YouTube video formats and they were always popular, but with fast fashion, with fast fashion brands like Xi'an, hauls have grown above and beyond any reasonable proportions. You have influencers taking a huge box, bigger than their own body, dumping out the contents, a sea of plastic bags, and the title huge Xi'an haul flashing above their heads, enticing you to watch, to check out what they got, how many things they got, Oh, for just, just this low price, you got so many things. And it's totally not that this is just content for clicks, right? They will actually wear these clothes more than once, not just put them on for this video, right? And I do want to clarify, I absolutely understand that not everyone can afford to buy a premium organic cotton t-shirt for $100, obviously. That's fine, I get it. But it doesn't have to be this all or nothing situation. I'm sure there's a middle ground between a top for $1 from Xi'an and a top for $100 from, I don't know, a big luxury brand. There are alternatives to fast fashion and at the end of the day, not even all fashion brands are the same. It's hard to recognize the nuances and I don't have all the answers either, but you know, you really don't have to go to the worst of the worst. One alternative for sure is thrifting which apparently Xi'an has also now entered the thrifting market. I mean, okay, it's better than to just throw the clothes away, but how much wear are you going to realistically get from a product like that? And, you know, with all the allegations of lead concentrations in clothes, I don't know. Another problem that I already kind of mentioned is it's very hard to know which brands are really ethical, if any. Because at the end of the day, even luxury brands like Chanel have been exposed for things like underpaying their workers, which I don't know if anything surprises me at this point, but it really sucks that even high fashion brands only sell us the illusion that they are better, either more ethical or better in quality than regular brands, which may be true in some cases or to, to some degree, but it's definitely not a necessity. There's clearly a lot of issues even with luxury higher-end brands. Do let me know if you are familiar with any ethical brand. I personally don't really know if there's any brand that I would be comfortable vouching for 100%. I do, for example, know that a YouTuber, Justine Leconte, has her own fashion brand. Uh, she sells clothing and jewelry. Uh, she's a fashion YouTuber, so she puts an emphasis on the ethical production of her garments. So materials are sourced in Europe and the garments are made in Europe. You know, fair payment and all of that. She's really big on this, which I find really cool. I don't know about the quality of her brand or anything. I haven't tried her products myself. I just know that they exist and I'm bringing it up because I think it's, it's a cool thing. And I believe that depending on the product that you're after, 
it can also be a nice idea to support a local or online small business, you know, craftsmen. The price will likely creep up, yes, so there's that, but at the end of the day it is an alternative and you can get a better idea of how the product is made and who makes your items. And this brings me to the last point that I want to make here, which is prices. I don't think we know anymore, or if we ever did, how much a certain thing should realistically cost so that it's not overpriced or underpriced, right? Like, how much should a fairly priced 100% organic white cotton t-shirt cost? $10, 20, 30, 40, 50, I don't know. Do we know? And I'm putting these questions out there because I don't think we think much about stuff like that on the daily basis. And fair enough, with all the things to do in a day and more important things to do, I wouldn't expect your ever Joe to go research about a fair price for every t-shirt that they buy and every pair of jeans that they buy and the history of the brand that they purchase from. But I do think it's a step in the right direction to be more mindful of what we're buying, how much we're buying, and part of the problem with fast fashion are not people who buy one or two items because they can't afford something more expensive. The problem is unnecessary overconsumption. And that's what brands like Shein target. People who have the money to purchase something else, but who can be enticed to spend $100 on a box of plastic trash instead of purchasing one or two better quality items from somewhere else. At the end of the day, you'll get more long-term profit from a quality product that will last you much longer. If you have the option, why not save up for a fine jewelry piece, a real golden ring that you can be able to pass on to your child one day, a family heirloom piece. Why not do something like this rather than spending $5 on a set of five costume jewelry pieces that you'll have to throw away after five months anyway because they'll get all black and, you know, how the, the material just gets destroyed. So yeah, these are just uh, a few of my cents, maybe more than two, but yeah. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I will probably make a follow-up on the fast fashion at some point. So let me know your thoughts on Shein and fast fashion in the comments below, and I will see you soon. happy, jolly workers. How dare you, sir? How dare you?